Okay, welcome back to my laboratory. I've got some new gloves. Hopefully they'll work. All right, so I gotta do some hammer stoning. And I'll be using some nasty stuff. Well, this is not, it's not too nasty. Some of this is okay. Like, I think this piece is all right. Yeah, I might not mess with this piece. All right, so I was doing some splitting of seasoned hickory uh, yesterday, yesterday and the day before. And yes, it's a pain in the butt, I'm not gonna lie. It's a pain in the butt to uh, split seasoned hickory with stone tools. Yes, yes, yes. But I did it. And uh, I just gotta, I've just got to get a little more practice so I can do it without hurting myself on video because it does require a lot of force. That's my excuse. I need to get to where it looks like I know what I'm doing. And I, I'll do it very soon. Get this stuff on video. I've been neglecting my projects. I got lots of projects. But anyway, and you know, lots of orders, lots of stuff to do for the auction. Where's my stuff? I got um, I got a collection of the stuff I was using to split that hickory. All right, so there's some damage to report. Like on this, I was chopping hickory with this. Now what happens is, it uh, I, I figured out, or I think I figured out why it breaks when you're chopping with this thick profile and why you probably need to uh, smooth it down or grind it because any little protrusion is a platform, right? Any protrusion on the edge is a platform where the hickory or the tough wood can catch and then peel off a flake. So that's what happens, I think. But I just continued the chop and it worked all right. It worked okay. I didn't use this at all, except right here I dinged it a little bit by accident. Silly me, so I gotta repair that. I'll show you on video how I repair these things, right? What about this video? Well, maybe not this video, because I'm gonna get back in the hammerstone. These are the two sizes of wedges that I've used to split the hickory. You need a smaller one to get it started and a larger one to uh, start expanding it. The hard part is getting it started, as, any, as a lot of you already know. I even had to use this, and I'll show you how I use it, but I have a flat spot that I can lay on the ground or on a log or something and force open that uh, first split. But I'll show you how to do it. Uh, yeah, I won't give away the secret yet. But anyway, I gotta make these a little bit better because if it's not perfectly smooth on these wedges, it stalls, especially on really tough wood, right? It was stalling on the hickory. So it's gotta be smooth. So I got it to where it was smooth enough. See, there's no step fracturing. It's all smooth there, so that it was going well after you get it started, of course. But yeah, it uh, requires some smoothness, so I think I know why they used to grind these things down. Nice and polished, at least for these wedges. For these, they polish it for a different reason, so it won't chip, you know, so the wood won't catch a platform. But I can chip it a lot better I'll flake it, nap it a lot better so there isn't any protrusion sticking out. I can do that. I think that's what I'll do next time. Because it was all kind of like this up here. I should have napped it down a little bit better. But I didn't know how much it would affect it. So yeah, I can nap this a little bit better. Um, I do have... Um, let's see. Yeah, I do have a handle that I am going to haft and adds to. So I changed my mind about hafting. I am going to make an exception and haft and adds because instead of having this big old uh, stone, 
for the chopping implement. What if you don't have big old stones like this? What if you only have stones in this range? Well, you can haft this as an adds. So it'll, it'll produce the same effect as this. All I need is a, a, a blade that wide and it doesn't need to be that big. So it just needs to be like this, but I can haft this to the to a handle. You'll see, and it, it, it does the same thing as this was doing. Okay, so I think that's, it's worthwhile to haft it if you only have small chunks like this. Okay, you, I'm kind of cheating by using a big old honking piece of stone that maybe 99% of people cannot obtain. Okay, so what was I doing? Where was I? What am I going to make with this? I'm going to make a wedge out of it. Yeah. See, this is not, this is nice and smooth on this side, and this is kind of smooth on that side. But I'm gonna I'm gonna mess up this side with some flakes. Yeah, mess it up. I'm gonna flatten the top. So, however long it takes, it's gonna take. Whatever it takes, that's how long it's gonna take. All right. So, first question, anybody? What's the difference between hammer stone and aluminum, then? <laughs> uh, well, I think that the uh, the difference, the immediate difference, is that I don't have to worry about maintaining this as much at all. If I find a nasty spot on here, I mean, if it gets nasty, I just switch to the spots. Not as much maintenance on the hammerstone, except you gotta throw away and find another one. That's another thing. I found a hammerstone the uh, day before yesterday in a creek here in Vermont. I need to test it out. I was gonna test it out. Where is it? I need to use Vermont materials. Because this is the land of no rock at all. This is a land, uh, this is a uh, rock desert, which is perfect for most people because they're in rock deserts. They, what do I use for rock? What do I use? All I have is concrete and nails. Concrete and nails. <laughs> I don't even have wood. I gotta steal my neighbor's broom so I can have wood for my fishy stick. Yeah. That kind of situation. You know, I'm not making fun of poverty, but the it gets pretty bad. Some people don't have anything. I'm just, I'm exaggerating, yes, but there are, there are people, a lot of them out there, that just want to get into this as a hobby and not spend their life savings on it. So they're scrounging. What do I do? I'm in the rock desert like you now. What do you do? Well, I have to buy a lot of my rock. Oh, yes. Now, if you live in another country, and there's no nappers out there. You're kind of on your own, you know. Although I just met somebody from another country that you wouldn't expect. And uh, nice artifacts from there. Oh, I'm not going to say yet. Anyway, the, uh, the artifacts are interesting. Not as interesting as... Uh, you think they are, so don't ask. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I need to get this flat. Yeah, if I told you about all the emails I get and, and discuss what I have been talking to people about, it would take forever. I could just make only videos just on that, just on what the stuff I get, I get on my emails. I could spend all day doing videos on nothing but discussing what I discuss on videos. I mean on emails. I'm not going to do it. Just bring up little things here and there. We were on the subject of being in a rock desert. Well, this country is in a literal desert. All right. Still found rock. To work with and I can find rock to work with I just need to look a little harder I'm pretty sure I can find some quartzite that I can work with so yeah I guess the quartzite videos are coming 
Alright, so getting back to the original question, what's the difference between this and aluminum, man? Well, aluminum is better, of course. Unless you're talking about free. This this hammerstone was free. Aluminum is not free. Unless you work in a place that throws away aluminum, then yeah, it's free. But nobody works in a place that throws away aluminum. No one seems to have a brother or a sister or uncle or whatever that works at places that throw away aluminum. Now, I've seen guys on YouTube melt down aluminum cans and make cookware out of, you know, cooking pots. Now, if you can make a cooking pot out of melted cans and dirt, you can make an aluminum bopper, an aluminum hammerstone. You can even shape it like a hammerstone. It's better than hammerstone. Why is it better? Because it it's a it's a grabs the edge a little bit better. It doesn't it doesn't bounce and shatter so much. Those of you who say that you prefer hammerstone because of the feel of it, I don't know what you're feeling. Maybe you got a rock fetish. That's all I'm saying. good enough see well you don't know if it's good enough until you try it out that might be good enough for a wedge it's cheating right because I didn't thin this down at all I'm not I'm not trying to make it thin I'm trying for a certain shape now, I took a little too much off but it's all right the beauty of this is it doesn't have to be perfect it just just has to be durable now, if it doesn't work, which it might not, because this tip might snap off. Uh, I can make something else out of it. Now, I'm getting these little areas that stick out is a challenge. It's a platform, it looks like, right? But it's not exactly correct. And to get these exactly correct with a hammer stone without pressure flaker, it's a little bit challenging, but it can be done. Just different areas on the hammer stone, you can just roll it around and get, if you have a hammer stone that has lumpiness to it. Now, some guys want perfectly round stuff. They say it's not a hammer stone unless it's almost perfectly round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, I like them to be lumpy so that I can find areas that I can use to be more precise. And if I don't want to be precise, there's flat spots on here. All right, all right, there you go. See, I wanted to get rid of that. So it's pretty much done. Okay, 13 minutes, next video. The funny thing about these, uh, when I was using them, is that they, they do break up on top too as when you hit them. But I was hitting stone on stone, right? It, it's not too bad if you have a, a crushy stone like a piece of cruddy limestone or whatever, but it still it still breaks. So I gotta get more of my, I gotta go and dig into the stash of hickory I have, and find something I'm not gonna use for a bow or whatever, and, and cut it up and use it as a mallet. I need to make a new mallet. The one I had got all beat up. Uh, and this is, this kind of wood, this white wood, isn't gonna that kind of white wood is not gonna work. I think this is maple or some other related not related but similar type of wood. They don't make good mallets. It's gotta be hickory or some kind of iron wood, you know, like hop hop horn beam or something. Or dogwood. Yeah. Dogwood billets are okay. But I like collecting hickory because you know why? You know what? I like collecting the hickory stuff because I can smoke meats with it. <laughs> I cheat, yes. I don't waste any of the hickory at all. All the chips, I'm looking at the chips like I'm hungry. Like, mmm, this is going to be good. Mmm, hickory wood chips. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, 
Uh, what I what I also figured out about the splitting wedge is that the, it needs to be symmetrical as much as possible too. This is not symmetrical. Why does it need to be symmetrical? Because when you're pounding on it with something and it gets tilted like this, you don't really notice that it's tilted and it's not as effective. It, it starts to go in wonky. And when, when you're dealing with a hard wood to split, if it gets all wonky, you've got to try to batter it back into place. Right, so it's got to be symmetrical and easy to determine if you're on the right track. Yeah. So. But I think, and this can't be too sharp. I don't know what I'm doing here. See, this is not it's supposed to contact the bottom of the split. But you'll see when I do it. You'll see when I demonstrate it. Because if it, it'll break. On the tough wood, yeah, it'll snap off. If it gets anywhere near the bottom of that split, it'll just snap right off. So it's got to be split pretty wide first. I mean, it's got to be. Uh, it's got to. It's got to uh, expand the the split pretty wide as it's going in, which makes it even harder to 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 pound it into the split. But you'll see. You'll see. I just got to get a little bit better at it and figure out figure out how to do it by myself without someone else holding some of this stuff. It's much easier two people are doing the splitting than one person. Right? Yes, it is, I found out. Not only do I have no rocks here, but no one to help me. No one to help me do this. There's no partner in crime. I can't say, hey, hey kids, hey kids, come over here and just for a second. I need you to hold this for a second. Ah, Dad, no, just hold it. Dad, you're gonna you're gonna hit me with the rock. <laughs> no, I'm gonna hit this with the rock, not you. <laughs> but this, the, the, the chips, Dad, the chips, the chips. Okay. It's just for a second. The chips are not going to bug you. Okay? And if I do see a chip go your way, I'll dive between you and the chip. How's that? I'll save you. <laughs> Was that a real conversation? Kind of, sort of. Do my kids put up a fuss? No, no, no. They don't. Not really. Not always. They're... They used to, you know, a little, but they don't remember that. They don't remember being highly uncooperative. I used to call it militantly uncooperative. Because not only do they not cooperate, but they were in your face about it. Okay. Okay, here we go. That's what happens when you have kids. You learn this stuff. I would have never thunk it. I always thought that children were, were really, um, really intimidated by their parents. But any sign of weakness in the parents, and the kids go, "Wait a second! Wait a second! This is a, this is an access for exploitation, or this is an access point for manipulation or exploitation." Yeah. Any sign of weakness. Yes, yes, yes. And believe me, when you're tired, no sleep. You have to do something like, uh, you know, everyone's tire gets flat that day. You got to change a bunch of tires. No, that, doesn't, that didn't happen. The, the most I changed was like two tires in one day. But anyway, let's just say it happened on a 100 degree day. Change two tires. Come home. You're all tired. Kids are like, ooh, he's tired. <laughs> Not going to notice this. What if I do this in the backyard? Nope, nope, nope. He's going to be too tired. And if he comes out here, he's all angry. I, uh, I'll be able to make a good excuse that he will not be able to think is a bad excuse. Yeah. I don't know.
Maybe that'll work. I don't know if that's gonna... See, if there's too much of an angle right there on top, it'll just peel off if I hit it with something. Why don't I hit it with a hammer stone and peel it off? Well, I don't really want it to peel off. I just want it to be flat. Now, would I have trouble getting that flat if I had aluminum? It's the same deal. I'm actually not wanting this to be pretty. The more crunchy and, and steppy and pulverized it is, the stronger it is because it's not going to want to flake. Okay, it's a whole different mindset. Let's see. I'm using the same types of platforms. Yeah, basically the same types of platforms. All right, so that's that's how that goes, all right? That's shaping a wedge. Now, let's do something else. Let's see, what, 20 minutes? Yeah, it takes. it's gonna take as long as it takes. Let's do a biface. Get back into bifacing. So did I answer the question, what's the difference between this and aluminum? But why aluminum? I've used steel, steel caps on a, a steel pipe. I've used moose antler, elk antler, white-tailed deer antler, atlas, no, I always get that wrong, axis deer antler. I've used, um, I don't know if I used buffalo horn on video or not, but I've used buffalo horn to try to hammer, you know, do, to try to do this direct percussion. Uh, I have a tusk. I have a warthog tusk or something. I, I don't want to ruin it though, so I just tried a little bit. I tried bone. I tried cow bone. How did the tusk work? It doesn't work that well. Why? Because it's really hard. And um, from what I remember, I didn't want to continue using it. It worked okay. It felt like it was kind of weird, right? Because um, it felt like I was using a hammer stone, but it was actually the tusk. Uh, and there are different grades of hammer stones. They're not all the same, right? So it weighs about the same as a piece of stone. That was the fun. I guess that was the weird part. Anyway, antler is a little bit lighter than stone. Okay. So what do I do? I knocked off the... Uh, the weak areas just like always and then you commence to swiping commence to swiping why swiping because if you look I have natural two videos I use swiping on the natural two videos everybody uses swiping on the natural tools why because it's very effective you can gouge with uh, antler, which a lot of guys do, but with hammerstone, it doesn't grab and pull unless you got a real soft hammerstone. You get me one of those wise guys that likes to use soft hammerstones and say they're great, fantastic. Of course, they're going to say they're great and fantastic because they're using them. So they don't want to look like they don't know what they're doing, so they're going to say, yeah, it works fantastic. Why? Why do you ask? You don't think I'm wasting my time, do you? Well, now that you mention it, actually, no, if it works, if you have a soft hammerstone that works, if you found a, a type that'll work, I've always found soft hammerstones to be very dusty and unreliable. Right when I need it to work, the soft hammerstone will break. It's my luck? Yes, it's my luck. That's the way it goes. That's what. That's how my luck goes. That's how I have to assume it goes as well. Why? Because if I assume that, then I'll take precautions against it happening. And if it does happen, I have this plan B. Like right now, this, this hammer stone is a little bit... Very, it's a little bit crushy on this material. This is very. Some of it's really bad. Some of it's really good. This particular piece has got good stuff here and bad stuff there. It uh, 
it likes it likes most materials the hammerstone and the material likes the hammerstone in many cases but you have to make an adjustment yeah you got to make the adjustment with copper or aluminum as well but to get it to where you you're making consistent hits on different materials you've got to make that adjustment uh, seamlessly and uh, it would probably be better if I wasn't talking yeah but I'll get it I had a bunch of width there so it, it wasn't too bad as far as uh, waste just to try to get used to this See, I'm losing a lot of material from the hammer stone, relatively speaking. You hardly lose any off of the aluminum. But this wears down pretty relatively fast. So not only are you dealing with differences in this material, you're dealing with differences in your hammer stone as well. There's slight differences. Your hammer stone changes shape as you're working, which is true of all foot napping tools but I notice it more with a hammer stone and it's more consequential with the hammer stone because it's more irregular you lose chunks of it kind of randomly instead of predictively like you do with metal metal is more predictable now did I have I worked this with the aluminum so I can tell you the difference not this particular situation where there's really good and really bad on the same stone but uh, yeah I did I think I did yes I did I did work with this batch of chert with the aluminum before this video not just before, like, I wasn't working on it today. But to make those other tools, I used my aluminum billet to shape that. Now I'm trying to thin this down with the hammer stone. See how thin I can go. Kind of steppy, kind of crunchy. Kind of painful eating my lunchy. Good, it's almost it's, it's 28 minutes, almost time to cut to the next segment. Yeah, almost. I'm trying to get as thin as I can with this hammer stone. can't wind up in here because I'm hitting everything but see that you don't get that kind of situation with aluminum I don't know if you can see that that's my hammer stone it doesn't like it I hit a I use a lot of force because I'm gonna need a lot of force to, to remove a big flake but the hammer stone crumbles in some cases guess when exactly when you need it not to crumble that's the answer when does it crumble everyone raise your hands and everyone's saying unison exactly when we need it not to crumble that's the right answer okay hit that pretty good it was a perfect platform in my view really good material right there but it stopped right at the bad material See the boundary, you can tell where the boundary is pretty much. But sometimes it works. I want to push it until I'm going to have to switch over to some other method. What am I going to do when this is thin? 
nothing probably just throw it in the discards because it's nasty nasty material and use it maybe for a splitting wedge or some sort of woodworking tool oh come on there you go yeah you could do it it does run flakes Yeah, it is nappable. Better than zero, right? You can run flakes on this. Come on, that was a perfect hit. Yeah. Let's try some imperfect hits. How's that? Actually, this is good stuff. I shouldn't be wasting it. On this side, around in here, I can just trim off all this nasty stuff on that side. But this side, I just wasted a bunch just going to town on it yeah it's not going to cooperate because it's got various areas all right i'm going to get a better piece so i can actually learn something while i'm hammer stoning instead of doing nothing but uh, what i call crud work but it gave me a chance to do some yapping all right, I think that's it. Yeah, I can use this part for something better than what I'm doing. Yep, yeah, okay, that's it.